Alex Mashinsky, founder and CEO of the Celsius Network. Welcome back to Real Vision. Thanks, Ash. Uh, chapter two. So let's let's kick it off. Yeah, chapter two, indeed. We had a conversation about a year ago uh, where we discussed you have had a fascinating life before ever getting into uh, the blockchain DeFi, CeFi space. Uh, I would urge anyone who hasn't already seen that interview to go check it out on Real Vision. I think it aired in December of 2020. So much to talk about here uh, today, the state of blockchain, the state of borrowing, lending, and yield, uh, Celsius's recent funding raise, and of course, the legal and regulatory framework that's happening around this space right now. Let's jump in, Alex, at the very beginning for people who haven't seen that interview. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your background. You're one of the few people to have experienced capitalism, socialism, and communism in your life. Give us a sense of how that shaped your view uh, of commerce, of banking, and of the financial world. Sure. Yeah, it's a great opening. I, I you know, I think uh, these are all three experiments, right? Some of them are failing. Some of them are just chugging along. And and uh, even if you look at capitalism, we all think capitalism is the best uh, solution out of the three. But capitalism today does not work for 99% of people living in America, right? Uh, not financially and not from a mental standpoint. And I think Corona kind of ha actually created almost like a reset, forcing all of us to think life work balance and all the things that we almost took for granted as a as the capitalist way. So having been born in, in communism in the Ukraine back in when it was part of the USSR, I lived in Israel, that's as, as socialist country as it gets. Uh, and uh, uh, coming to the United States and living the American dreams, right, creating eight startups. I'm part of the 1%. It works great for me. But when I look around me, it's definitely not a, uh, the system that I envision the United States to be. And that's one of the reasons I created Celsius Network. Yeah. So as we talked about in the prior interview, you have a long history in the telecom space. Give us a sense of how you got interested in blockchain, in Bitcoin, and in this technology. So I'm a tech entrepreneur, uh, again, voice over IP. Uh, I built, uh, I, was, I was CEO of Novatel Wireless, built the first uh, 5G device in the United States for Verizon, uh, the MiFi 1000. So everything in my career, uh, put the wireless, uh, uh, 5G and uh, Wi-Fi in the wireless in the subway, transit wireless. So you look at my career, almost everything I've touched, we made things faster, better, and cheaper. So when I looked at Satoshi's paper in 2009, one of my friends showed it to me, uh, it was slower, more expensive, and it, and it was basically every 10 minutes, a transaction every 10 minutes, which made zero sense from kind of like the 30-year history, tech history uh, that I had. And, and I tried to put money over IP back in 2004. I created a startup that was attaching money to email and allowed you to send emails to each other, tried to bypass the banking system, and the regulars didn't like it uh, at all. So I did not solve the double spend problem, and I didn't recognize it when I met, when I read Satoshi's paper, I did not recognize that he solved the double spend problem. So it took me until 2013 to really understand that uh, something big is is happening and I need to really rethink all of my assumptions about the future of uh, fintech. So talk to us a little about Celsius, what the problem you were looking to solve is. Obviously, Celsius has been uh, doing this now in this space for some time. You recently raised, I think, $400 million uh, at Celsius at a $3 billion or thereabouts valuation. Tell us a little bit how you got started with Celsius. Sure. So I dabbled in different coins, both as an investor and as a hodler, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on, so on. And, and uh, um, so I, I think Bitcoin solves the store of value phenomenally well, but it did not solve many other problems. That's why Ethereum was created. And on top of it, I, I thought that yield is the second killer app, really the, the way that we're going to basically scale uh, or move from TradFi or traditional finance into uh, uh, this new revolution of, of decentralized finance, right? So uh, my focus was on, okay, what are the ways to create yield on different digital assets? And what is the business model that will make the most sense in a way that instead of replicating what Wall Street, all the business models that Wall Street uses, 
uh, to basically either manage funds or allocate uh, assets. What if we have an opportunity here to reinvent finance to the be- hopefully to make it better? So let's uh, put new rules and, and conditions so we don't replicate Wall Street, but we create something for the people by the people. Well, you know, you've been very eloquent talking about uh, some of the weak points in the traditional banking system. Give us a sense of how you think uh, of banking here in the United States and elsewhere in the developed world uh, right now. I know you've spoken about uh, the tremendous amount of revenue uh, and profit that uh, banks redistribute to their shareholders. Give us a little bit of a sense of that critique uh, and how you see that system. Right. So so in traditional finance, uh, uh, financial institutions, not just bank, but all forms of financial institutions act as trusted custodians, as, as uh, again, the toll collectors, the, the, they manage the transaction, the exchange of assets or uh, uh, currencies between different participants. And uh, over time, uh, instead of uh, basically rewarding their customers, they shifted more and more of these rewards toward their shareholders. So if you look at today at JP Morgan or any of the major banks, basically almost 100% of what they generate in income, instead of going to customers as yield or as, as, as interest, uh, goes to shareholders and executives as either dividends or stock buybacks or uh, bonuses. So, so that transfer assumes that customers have no choice and that they will stick with the bank or the financial institutions uh, no matter what the payout is. So it's okay to charge these customers uh, fees, right? All kind of fees. Uh, uh, and, and it's okay not to pay them any yield. Uh, and that's just not uh, what the world looks like. I came to the United States 30 years ago and I remember depositing uh, my dollars with Citi and they paid me 7%. I didn't have to do anything, right? It was just that was the yield on your savings account. So really, we're just trying to bring that back. Yeah, you've talked about how people are just starving for yield right now. Uh, Give us a sense uh, of how you solve that problem. Specifically, you've talked about uh, how yield is the second killer app, the first being store of value. Uh, Tell us a little bit about how you generate yield at Celsius. Where does it come from? How does it work? Explain the mechanics. I did not invent yield. I just brought yield into digital assets, right? So yield obviously is something banks proudly display every quarter in their financial filings with the SEC. Anyone can see what is return on capital, what is uh, you know what is the multiple of a, uh, you know in the fractional reserve system and so on, so on. So uh, that's how financial institutions and banks earn. Uh, income, right? They basically create income on the assets that they have, and uh, uh, that turns into yield as a percentage of their uh, existing assets. So, so the the way to do this uh, in crypto is not any different, right? So, so we basically uh, took ideas like uh, securities lending or sec lending from the traditional world, uh, arbitrage, uh, market making, all these activities that are standard activities in financial markets and brought them into uh, digital assets. The big difference is that instead of trying to reward the shareholders, here most of these benefits, most of the yield created or the value created on these assets uh, goes to the participants in the network. So we have about 1.2 million users from over 170 countries. We aggregated over $30 billion of their digital assets and any institution or exchange that wants to borrow those pays us yield and we just shared most of that with our community. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.